Hello everyone. So, we are continuing our discussion on cost. Um, so, now we will discuss a very important component of cost analysis is break even point or break even analysis. So, while we are uh, you know uh, discussing or talking about break even, it basically talks about the relationship between total revenue and total cost. So, um, if I plot total revenue and total cost, if uh, you remember how this total cost looks like, it is a sigmoid curve something like this, you know uh, something like this and my total revenue curve, if I consider it to be a straight line if I consider it to be a straight line, then my total revenue curve is this and total cost curve is this and over here I have my quantity of production and over here the y axis my total cost. What we basically see that total revenue is the product of price and quantity. Total revenue is a product of price and quantity and then if price is remaining fixed with the rise in quantity being produced, it is going to be a straight line through the origin. Now, this total revenue and total cost when total cost is a uh, you know curvature uh, that when it increases and it flattens and then again it increases at an increasing rate when previously initially it increases at a decreasing rate. So, we can see that when total revenue curve is above the total cost curve at this position, when total revenue curve is above the total cost curve, we have a positive profit because at this total revenue is greater than total cost and therefore, I have a positive profit. On the other hand, when I am here, we can see that total cost is more than the total revenue. So, total cost is greater than the total revenue that means, I have a negative profit that means, I am incurring loss. Therefore, and at this point which is basically the break even point on this point, I have this is my break even point where I have my total revenue equals the total cost, total revenue equals the total cost which shows that I am having a zero profit condition. At this particular output level, I have achieved this is my Q say prime, I have achieved my break even point where my total revenue is total cost. So, when I am initially starting my production, my total cost is increasing, I do not get my total production if you remember is something like this right, just opposite to the total cost is something like this yeah. So, it is like uh, first it is increasing at a decreasing rate, increases at an increasing rate and then again it decreases at a increases at a decreasing rate. So, if I So, if I have this total uh, this total product curve which is at the very beginning not producing much you know the returns is poor, then my cost is higher and as my returns is poor my revenue is also not very high and then I am making a loss. So, my total cost at the initial stages of my production my total cost is lesser than my total revenue and uh, greater than my total revenue and I am making a loss. And slowly with the rise in production, the total cost comes down, total production increases at an increasing rate, I move to at a point where my total revenue meets the total cost that is my break even point and I move further total cost is lower than the total revenue giving me a positive profit. The vertical distance at the point where my vertical distance between total revenue and total cost is highest at that output level, my profit is highest Q star. My I make the highest profit or I can write it as Q pre Q p my profit is highest. Eventually, when 
my total revenue and the vertical distance between my total revenue and total cost is maximum at that point where total cost is higher than the total revenue, I am making the maximum loss. In both these two points, the slope between this marginal revenue and marginal cost are equal. Similarly, over here the slope between marginal revenue and marginal cost are equal. So, on both these points here marginal revenue equals marginal cost and I get maximum loss because my total cost is higher than my total revenue and on this marginal revenue equals marginal cost, but I get maximum profit because my total revenue is higher than the total cost at this period of at this entire you know this blue shaded region and over there only at that point I have highest profit after that again my profit reduces increasing my cost at that point I have the highest profit where the vertical uh, dif distance between revenue and cost is highest and the slopes of the revenue curve and the, the cost curve is basically similar. So, this is how we can identify at which point my profit will be maximized, maximized at what level of output and at what level of output I reach the break even point after continuously uh, incurring losses in the be beginning of my production. But I will never go beyond this that is primarily because again if I continue over production I am going to the uh, these economies of scale, we will learn about that or uh, diminishing returns to scale where my cost will increase at a rate which will be unassailable because with this output production, you know, the, the, the I am not making an efficient choice. Now, I will move to till now I was talking about the short run curve. What about when I talk about long run total cost curve? Long run total cost curve or it is actually in long run production function when we de uh, decide about the way in long run production function when we talk about the cost mechanism we primarily look at the average total cost. We primarily look at the average total cost at long run. You can call it a long run average total cost or L R A T C L R A T C long run average total cost. This long run average total cost is also known as a planning curve because in long run, I can change all my variable uh, inputs or I can change all my inputs, all my inputs turns variable and I can really dis change my you know the scales of production over the period of time deciding about the amount of production I am going to make. Therefore, I, I am planning for a longer duration or, or for you know for my future. Yes, so that is how we are and that is when we are deciding about the cost mechanism given the long run uh, cost mechanisms and based on this long run average total cost I can identify that at which level I have this long run average total cost and uh, how much. A long run average total cost shows the per unit cost for production at a longer period of time where all my variables, all my inputs are variables and based on my plant size that is uh, plant size means uh, my capital and labor inputs, the amount of capital and labor and the desired outcome. A long run average total cost is basically a combination of several short run average total cost curves, a combination of several average total cost curves combination of multiple short run average total cost curves. Yes, how do I combine them? Let us see. So,
the long run cost, the long run actually is a combination of several short run periods. So, when I start produce, production, I basically look at okay for a smaller duration of time, how I am going to work, you know, so for a, for a smaller particular time period. So, when I am talking about this, uh, this you know short run average total cost curve at the very beginning of my production unit i have this srt stc1 short run average total cost curve one i have another short run average total cost curve two i have another short run average total cost curve three and then I have another one over here 4 and I have another one 5. Yes. Now, at the short run average total cost, I am producing this much as the short run average total cost, this is my best production at this short run average total cost 3, this is my best production and so on. Having said this, having said this, this is my quantity of output. If I am here at the short run 1, then I will manufacture only this much. When I move to short run 2, I eventually realize with higher production, I can move to short run average, say if my curve is something like this, SRATC 1, then I can, if I am continuing on SRATC 1, short run average total cost 1, then I am actually incurring a higher cost. So, so I will move to an unit where I am to SR ATC 2 and I can find that with this quantity Q2, I am incurring a lower cost and so on with moving from Q2 to Q3 with further production, I can move to SR ATC 3 where my cost is further low. So, in a long run, in a long run, I will find this several points where for each input, uh, for each output, I have different factors of production. So, it will be something like this and then so this can be my long run taking into account all these individual short run curves. Uh, a production function can have you know virtually unlimited uh, sh uh, short run number of possible plant sizes in short runs you know. So, unlimited and if I have unlimited possible plant sizes, then I can have a smooth long run average total cost curve. So, this is my long run average total cost curve, which is a smooth one. Yes, and this curve is also known as envelope curve because, because it actually you know you can see that it covers all these short run cost curves you know so it it can it 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 kind kind of forms an envelope so it knows known it's known as envelope curve and it's a basically a smooth one now in the downward sloping region of long run average cost curve shows that i am having an economies of scale In an increasing part where the cost curve goes upward sloping, then I have a diseconomies of scale. Yes. 
economies of scale and diseconomies of scale. Now, these economies of scale can happen because of the labor specialization because here my cost is decreasing with further output, you know. So, it can ha be uh, because of labor specialization if we are thinking of labor, it can be because of technical um, you know specialization with better technologies and all so my capital is being improved so my cost is decreasing and another way if we are thinking of the managerial terms it can be because of managerial specialization because of managerial specialization based human resource management based scheduling and so on and so forth based operation research techniques given the same capital and labor my cost is coming down. You know? But when we are on the upward sloping curve, then there can be several reasons, you know, which are managerial uh, apart from the, you know, the kind of diminishing return to scale or apart from the, uh, of the inputs that where my inputs are not really doing the best, the decreasing, the returns to scale is decreasing and uh, or diminishing. But at the same time, in terms of managerial, if there is a lot of hierarchy, if the, you know, the management decision is not the best, the, uh, the labor uh, is not actually connected with the organization, then basically, you know, the output per labor, the average uh, output per labor falls, which eventually increases the average cost. So, this is the economies of scale, which we s can think of in terms of the managerial point of view. At the same time, at this point, we can, you know, sometimes see a longer stretch of this where the average total cost is flat. That means for a particular duration or for a particular point, it is having a constant economies of scale or, you know, the constant returns to scale where the, you know, the, 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 with the change in labor and capital, the output has remained same though. So, it does not really have uh, an implication on the change in cost. So, the cost remains fixed, you know. So, we can have a flatter region where it shows the constant return to scale. So, uh, therefore, we can finally get uh, my total cost multiplied by, uh, I can get my total cost for the long run, which is nothing but the average total cost multiplied by the quantity. And then the marginal cost is nothing but the change in total cost by change in quantity in a longer period of time. When we see that similar to my short run average cost curves, even in the long run, we see my, this is my long run marginal cost curve, which intersects the long run average total cost curve at its minimum point, you know, where the cost is minimum. So, what we find that when in long run, when in long run, my marginal cost is less than my average cost, my marginal cost is less than my average cost, then there is economies of scale. There is economies of scale, that means that my cost is decreasing. And eventually, when MC is equals to average total cost, that shows us that my average total cost is at its minimum. And when marginal cost is greater than average total cost, I see that I am having a diseconomies of scale. That means, my average total cost curve is increasing. Therefore, this is uh, where we can understand that how in the long run my average uh, cost curve and the my marginal cost curve you know uh, function together. Taking this forward, we can do a cost volume profit analysis. A cost volume profit analysis is uh, tries to give us an understanding about to get, uh, you know, it is known as CVP analysis as well. So, cost 
volume, the volume says the volume of production and profit analysis also known as CVP analysis or CVP analysis, right. So, this cost volume profit analysis says that given my desired output, given the uh, unit selling price, given the uh, unit fixed cost, unit variable cost and eventually the total cost, what can be my output to get a certain level of profit or what can be my output to get to, to be on the break even point where my total revenue meets the total cost. That is primarily when I start a business I know or when I start a prod production or when I start to deliver my services I know that at the very beginning I may not get profit or I may incur losses. But it is important to learn that where I, my profit and cost are meeting each other that means I am on a break even point and I also know that after that I am going to make positive profit my total revenue will overcome my total cost. So, this is how many units of output I must produce, I must sell, what should be the, the cost in terms of uh, several administrative parts, uh, advertisement costs and so on and so forth. If I change my technology, how much I gain and all. But basically this cost volume profit analysis just requires few basic inputs that the selling price, the number of units I, am, I desire to produce or I, I will produce or I am producing, the, uh, the, the, the uh, fixed cost, the variable cost and that is all. So, the as we know the break even point is where the total revenue and total cost make, uh, matches and in a production firm I can calculate my profit, I can calculate my profit as what is profit? Total revenue minus total cost. So, I can calculate my profit given by my total revenue minus variable cost minus fixed cost, is not it? Or I can keep this variable cost and fixed cost together that is my total cost, total revenue minus total cost is my profit and in break even point, this profit on break even point, what happens? My profit is equal 0 or if I want say 10,000 rupees of profit, I, my profit becomes 10,000. If I want to attain the break even point, this becomes 0. So, let us understand how we can get my profit or, or my break even point. Just for a simple example, take a simple example that um, say my price per unit of sales. per unit sales, say this is rupees 500. Yes, variable cost is rupees 300. My fixed cost is rupees 80,000. Yes, this is my all the information given. They say that what will be your profit or how much you want to produce if I am in a break even point. So, my profit is 0 on a break even point. So, on a break even point, I must produce to be on a break even point, I must produce that amount which will take my profit to 0 and my profit becomes 0 when my total revenue which is 500 multiply by Q, I do not know what is Q, I am going to find Q minus total variable cost is 300 multiplied by Q, one unit variable cost is 300 rupees and for Q number of production, my variable cost will be 300 multiplied by Q minus 80,000. This is my fixed cost. This is not associated with production, right? So, whatever the production is, q 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5,000, it is remaining 80,000 and this all should equate to 0 because I am trying to find my 
break even point. So, 500 Q minus 300 Q will give me 200 Q minus 80,000 equals 0. So, I can get 80,000 that side on my right hand side. So, 200 Q is equal to 80,000 which eventually give me Q equals 80,000 by 200 which is 400. So, I get my quantity which is 400. So, to be to attain a break even point, I must produce at least 400 units of product, you know 400 units. There is a con concept of contribution margin per unit when we do break even point. Uh, when we do cost volume profit analysis. So, contribution margin per unit is nothing but the per unit the difference between the per unit selling price minus per unit variable cost. cost. So, this difference is known as contribution margin, you know. So, now, we take few assumptions while we do cost volume profit analysis, which are those assumptions? I will just you know try to write them down. So, number one assumption is changes in the level of revenue. So, ch changes in revenue and costs arise only because of units or only because of number of units produced and sold. So, that means, my revenue and cost will only depend upon Q that is the total amount of production I am or the total amount of production I am manufacturing or I am selling. The second is total costs can be divided into fixed cost and variable cost. So, total cost can be divided into fixed cost and variable cost. Now, fixed cost is fixed irrespective of the output of production of uh, production whereas, variable cost is uh, will change with respect to the amount of production or the level of out, output. The third is when graphed both total revenue and total cost curves will be linear. So, if I have my total revenue curve, you know when I have my total revenue curve which we saw it is to be a straight line and I had my total cost curve which is like this, no it will no more be like this, my total cost curve will something be now will be something like this, you know will not be like this anymore, will not be like this anymore. So, it will be something like a straight line. So, this is my total revenue, this is my total cost. So, this uh, the green one is my total cost and then the blue one is my total revenue curve. Yeah. So, when graphed they will take a straight line approach. The next one is we know, we know we we have information about the unit selling price the fixed cost and the variable cost we have information are all known and constant they are not changing while i am doing this CVP analysis. So, they will remain constant. The fifth is uh, that when we are talking about the revenue and cost, they can be added and compared without taking into account the time value of money. So, my when I am doing my CVP, I do not take into account my time value of money is not taken into 
account. That means whenever I am estimating the revenue and I am estimating the cost and I am doing a cost volume profit analysis to find a particular level of output to achieve the break even point or to, uh, to achieve a certain level of profit. I do not consider that uh, if there is any time lapse or you know, so there is no cost associated with the time. Therefore, we can whatever we talk about revenue, we are talking in terms of we can also call it operating income income operating income because that is the difference between this total revenue and total cost the difference between the total revenue from the operations and total cost from the production of goods and services as well as this operation cost operating cost so total revenue from the operations and total cost from the production of goods and services as well as this operational cost or other administrative costs and all which are essential for this production process. Here we are not considering tax, tax is not considered, income tax yeah? is not considered, fine. But when we are talking about net income, so this is my operating income. minus income taxes. Yes, okay. We will do a small problem, you know, just to uh, you know, show how this thing works. Say, assume a medicine shop, a medicine shop that purchases medicine at a rate of rupees 32. So, a medicine shop purchase medicines at the rate rupees 32 yeah, from a manufacturer. Other variable costs are rupees 10. Costs is rupees 10 per unit. So, what is my total variable cost? My total variable cost here 32 plus 10 is 42, right? Because 32 is to get the medicines, you know, purchase the medicines, each uh, medicine will cost me 32 rupees plus other variable costs pertaining, maybe it is a transportation cost, you know, billing cost, and all these things ordering cost, inventory cost is rupees 10. So, the total variable cost is rupees 42 and the manufacturer, manufacturer allows the medicine, uh, allows the shop to return the medicines and receive a full rupees 32 refund as refund after a year or within one year, not after a year, within one year, within a year. Yes, the average selling price is rupees 70. So, the selling price per unit average yeah, is rupees 70 and total fixed cost is rupees 84,000. Let us see what happens. The question is how much revenue will the business or will the medicine shop receive if 2500 units are sold. Here I know my quantity, I do not know my profit. So, that is what are being asked, it can be profit, it can be loss, you know. So, the total revenue is nothing but 70 multiplied by 2500, 
which is nothing but 175,000 or 175,000. Yes, so the variable cost, total variable cost is now I know 32 plus 10, 42 was the total variable cost. So, 42 multiplied by 2500, which amounts to 105 000. And then my total profit will be total revenue minus total variable cost minus total fixed cost which is 14,000. So, this is how I can estimate my cost. Now, what is my contribution? Uh, I, I mean, I can estimate my profit. Yeah. So, what is my contribution margin per unit? As I mentioned, this is the difference between the per unit selling cost and per unit variable cost. So, per unit selling cost is 70, per unit variable cost is 42. So, my marginal cost per unit is rupees 28. So, this is contribution not marginal cost sorry, rupee, this is contribution margin per unit which is the difference between the selling price and then the variable cost. If I want to know that total contribution margin, if I want to know total contribution margin then I just multiply my marg contribution margin per unit which is rupees 28 multiplied by 2500 because that is my total sales or total production, total sales in this example. So, rupees 70,000 is my total contribution margin and the contribution margin percentage, margin percentage which is also known as the contribution margin ratio is estimated as the ratio between the contribution margin per unit and then the selling price. So, this is the ratio between contribution margin per unit which is rupees 28 and the per unit selling price. So, 28 by 70 which can be 0 0.40 or 40 percent is the contribution margin percentage uh, over the selling price. Therefore, uh, you know we can have an idea about the the, the, the contribution margin, the break even point, the uh, profit level at various points. You know, we can also estimate our break even point, we can also estimate our break even point in terms of the contribution margin approach. So, we can estimate our break even point by contribution margin following contribution margin approach. through the ratio between fixed expenses or fixed cost by the ratio between fixed cost and unit cost margin. Yeah, so unit cost margin is nothing but I am sorry I should have mentioned it is nothing but the contribution margin per unit. unit cost is nothing but the contribution margin per unit. So, in my previous example, if my you know the fixed cost 80, 84,000 and my contribution margin is rupees 28. So, I can estimate my uh, break even point as 84,000 by 28 which is 3000 as my break even point. Yeah. So, this is how we can estimate my, uh, my break even point and I can also estimate the level of profit if amount of production given the level of profit. If I have as the similar to fixed cost 
plus the level of profit or the target profit divided by the contribution margin per unit. divided by the contribution margin per unit and then we will tr uh, have an idea that how many units I need to sell or you know output needs to be or units needs to be s units or outputs needs to be sold or manufactured to attain the target profit. That means, it can also give us an idea target profit by pi. It can also give me the idea if I am starting my hospital that how many patients I need to treat or in IPD or in OPD or in together to get my break even point or to attain a certain level of output and or how many beds I need to keep when I will, uh, I will try to attain a certain level of output or production. Uh, now, uh, you know like cost mechanism in hospital is really really challenging. So, when we talk about the cost mechanism in hospital we you know uh, with the modern day hospitals with uh, uh, equipped with fantastic technologies um, with uh, you know best uh, of the art uh, scientific systems and all this. Um, so, it is really, really challenging that and all these departments in a hospital have different requirements. They, requ they use different uh, machineries, the, you know, the, the, the charges of different, the fees of the different uh, remuneration of different doctors are different. Um, the cost of the medicines are different, the number of hospital stay uh, are different. Now, um, the production or the cost in a hospital is uh, measured these days average length of stay in a hospital that is again to mention this is especially when we dis discuss about the IPD inpatient department where the hospitalization is required OPD outpatient department hospitalization is not required. So, the average length of stay is utilized length of stay that is stay in the hospital in the bed OLOS is utilized to understand that how many you know what is the production or, or of this hospital for a particular patient which that is the length of stay. So, uh, when it is that complicated I will discuss about few basic cost uh, structures or cost mechanisms in hospital. Uh, but when we are looking at the measurement of this average length of stay or a cost or associated with the length of stay or a, treating a particular patient having a particular disease or eventually when I talk about a hospital holistically we do not talk about a particular disease it is it is everything together and there comes the challenge when we talk about the everything together the objectives of a costing system talks about number one utilization of resources as utilization of resources as you know the number of average length of stay in oncology department may be much more than in a you know uh, say orthopedics department or the cardiology uh, you know so and or say op uh, ophthalmology. So, every particular department has varying or highly varying length of stay or utilization of different resources. The, the ophthalmology department or the neurology department have different utilization of MRI or X-ray uh, from this oncology or say orthopedics or say pediatric department. Yeah. The next is 2, where we talk about profitability analysis department wise, department wise profitability analysis.
Yes, and then when we do department specific profitability analysis, we need to understand in which department, how much, uh, you know, uh, how much of the system being utilized, what is the patient footfall, what is the length of stay, uh, what is the basic treatments generally sought for, all these things. Number three is fixation of doctor's remuneration. often very very challenging and you do it based on the reputation of the doctor, the uh, business a doctor is bringing because nowadays in a corporate hospital doctors are consultant and you know doctors are seen as a profit making agent and then the doctor's remuneration is highly dependent upon the profit they are able to generate. Therefore, fixation of doctor's remuneration is dependent upon and it is it's, it's, it's also you know uh, falls under an objective of the costing uh, estimation in a hospital. The four is fixing schedule of charges. This is for each different services, how much charge you, how much do you charge to the patients for MRI, for X-ray, for one day stay in the hospital, in the inpatient department, for utilization of OT. This is based on what kind of technology you have, what kind of services you are providing, what kind of buildings you have, whether you, what kind of TV you are providing, how many patients are sharing up one particular room and all these things, you know, what kind of bed you have given to the patient. So, everything determines the fixation of charges. Now, this bed, the TV, the, um, uh, the general equipments do not vary from the patient to patient, from the surgery to surgery, from the department to department. What varies are again the treatment specific uh, utilization. So, everything needs to be together when you, uh, when you estimate a cost and based on that cost you estimate how much you are going to charge that patient. Number five is monitoring of factors affecting pricing. Monitoring of factors affecting pricing. You know, I once a very uh, senior hospital administrator told me a story that in a hospital it wa was being observed that in a particular bed whoever is coming is choking to death. You know, they found that the, uh, the oxygen uh, cylinder, the ventilator, everything is fine, every equipment is working fine. But what used to happen they never could figure out for a longer duration of time for a considerable period of time. Eventually when they figured out the reason was whenever the maid used to come to clean that hospital uh, that, that particular room or the, near that particular bed, she used to remove that ventilator, uh, ventilator plug point from the charge and then the patient died. So, these are the or you know there is an uh, there are nurses who are just given charge to look at or uh, at her words or monitor around that where there is any you know uh, mistakes or any lacuna in terms of the facility you know if there is any leakage or if there is water on the flow if there is any seepage if there is a probability of a short circuit so she just looks around so these are the monitoring of factors affecting pricing because if there are fallacies on these parts the cost will increase and then the cost of a death is tremendous in a hospital. They cannot afford that because it does not only spoil their business, it spoil their reputation for a, over a longer period of time. So they cannot afford that. Eventually in a hospital we have when we do the costing we take into account both the direct cost and indirect cost. So the direct cost is basically the costs associated to the treatment and then the indirect cost are those which are like say administrative cost, the building cost, the you know ambulance costs which are basically you know similar to, uh, for all these patients. So this direct cost and indirect cost when taken together we call it one is absorption costing while costing 
absorption costing which is also known as account cost. This absorption costing takes into account both fixed cost as well as variable cost. And uh, the second is marginal costing which takes care of this variable cost only because fixed cost remaining same the variable cost with one unit uh, of extra patient what is my cost increasing. So, we have to take both these absorption costing and uh, marginal costing and you know when we are doing this absorption costing and marginal costing whichever me mechanism we are following we must understand that we are taking into account all these factors which are affecting costs in a hospital. Uh, so, indirect cost whichever factor needs to come and in indirect cost whichever factors need to come and also the expenses say stationary expenses basic general expenses we also need to account for them like say stationary expenses building capital value the rent the electricity the equipment and machinery rent the charges we take into take care all of these you know and therefore when we take into account all of these then we estimate the cost for every patient for a particular taking a particular treatment otherwise we are certainly ending up up in a miscalculation or misappropriation of a problem of a hospital cost. Now, when we talk about this hospital cost, we need to keep in mind apart from these five points that utilization of resource department wise profitability analysis fixation of doctors so and so forth. We also need to find that which is the final product. So, define the final product. What is my final product? Yes, and because we are accountable to the patients, we have to say because of this particular treatment or this particular outcome, this particular process, we are charging you this. So, what is the final product? Why we are doing following a particular process for a particular treatment? We are accountable, we are answerable to them. Number two is define cost centers that which are different cost elements, which are different cost centers, which is raising my cost or which is contributing to my total cost. The third is assign inputs to cons cost centers, assign inputs. So, which are the hospital inputs for that for those particular cost centers and how those inputs are contributing to the total cost or average cost or even marginal cost for those particular cost centers. Maybe for OPD my cost centers are different than my operation theater, they are different from my ICU, they are different from my say uh, um, an awareness generation camp or an outreach camp done by the hospital, say some eye checkup or some diabetic checkup, some cardiovascular uh, or say some basic health checkup done in a particular camp say Apollo once or Narana Rudalaya once decided to do these camps in one of their clinics. Yes, and if they can why they do this that is the primary one thing is that to reach the patient and the another thing is that because they have multiple selling points for multiple products they do not only you know, these days give you know uh, this uh, treatment they are not only treating the patients but also selling medicines also having diagnostic centers also having small clinics NH have started having small centers where they are treating that cardiology patients very small centers you know 5 bedded 10 bedded 15 bedded hospitals where they are uh, they are taking the emergency cases they have all the facilities needed for a cardiovascular patient or a patient with heart ailments in the emergency so they don't have to rush to that you know the far away the nh main center they they are having the small units where they are they can treat the patients and that the doctor may come there to do the surgeries even so the four so these cost centers different cost centers have different uh, different inputs and we need to understand which are those inputs and how they are playing uh, a role in that. The fourth can be uh, the fourth can be uh, full cost of each input. After identifying these inputs, we have to understand that full cost of each input. That for each input, how much cost I am in incurring? Can I, you know, reduce that cost with keeping the input same, improving the technology, or? can I do a, uh, a better mix of these inputs? So, I need to understand that what is the full cost contribution by each particular input. 
and which can also be the contribution margin per unit right that the variable cost by particular unit for a particular factors of production uh, and its uh, difference from the selling cost and it, sh it shall not go down then I am losing my profit my contribution margin shall not go down by a large margin. The next one is allocate all costs to final cost centers. So, all costs allocate all costs to final cost centers that means all input cost is coming to the final cost centers after I assign the inputs I get the full cost after I get the full cost I allocate all cost to the final cost centers and then I can uh, uh, compute the unit cost cost which is the average cost or marginal cost the unit cost for each final cost sensor so i will compute the unit cost for each final cost centers yes that is icu may have different services icu may have different um, uh, inputs and after understanding cost contribution by each input for each cases I, I will estimate the you know total cost for this cost center and then for this ICU 1, ICU 2, ICU 3 I can probably uh, or NICU, ICU, NICU, uh, SICU, special intensive care unit, neonatal intensive care unit I can uh, you know estimate my total intensive care unit cost and then the final one is then you get the results of your entire cost estimation and this is how you do a cost estimation for a particular hospital services and this is eventually is not a very easy one you can download a uh, document which is given by uh, which is a manual for hospital managers uh, analysis of I will just write it down it is known as analysis of hospital costs analysis of hospital costs a manual for managers. Yeah, and this is a document published by World Health Organization in 2000. You can go through this and you can get several articles by NCBI or you know by BMJ who have estimated or tried to estimate the cost functions in hospital. Yeah, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.